the movie opens at Blackwood Pharmaceuticals, where a pre-recorded voice message is playing inside the building. It says that they specialize in understanding how a drug affects the human body before it's released to the public. Simultaneously, a young woman named Claire arrives at Blackwood Pharmaceuticals to participate in a five-day clinical trial in exchange for a huge sum of money. She heads straight to her assigned room, which she has to share with two other girls. One of them greets her and introduces herself as Allison. She immediately starts conversing, but her talkative nature annoys Claire. Later on, all the participants are summoned to the exam room in the basement, where there's no mobile signal. As a result, Claire's attempt to contact her worried mother fails. Shortly after, they are addressed by Dr. Burke, who will be supervising the trial. She explains to them that the trial is called the Double Blind, in which they'll be finding out whether a new drug is safe or not. For this, they will be given the drug, and its dose will gradually increase as the days pass by. All of them will be confined to the same floor for the upcoming five days, under close observation of nurses. Following this, the trial finally begins. The participants are provided with the first dose of pills, and throughout the day, the nurses diligently monitor their health, repeating questions about any discomfort. Any pain in your toes? Eyes? Do you feel like your butt's going to fall off? <laughs> what? During lunchtime, Claire gets to know the other participants, and learns that some of them have volunteered for such trials before. One of them, Vanessa, doesn't socialize with anyone and stays by herself. It appears that she is a homeschooled kid with orthodox religious parents and has lived a hard life. Another participant is a medical student, Amir, who volunteered for the trial, hoping the experience will be useful in the future. It will be, or he'll die. Later that evening, Claire tries to take a nap, but Allison strikes up a conversation. This leaves her frustrated, and she ends up lashing out at the talkative girl. Right then, Claire feels nauseous, so she rushes to the bathroom to throw up. As she walks out, she stumbles upon Amir, who is also in the same state. It's probably a side effect of the drug. That night, a sleepless Claire gets up to discover that her roommate's beds are empty. She then walks towards the living room, where she finds the other test subjects, who are also in the same condition. This strange occurrence raises concern among the participants. However, Dr. Burke examines them the following morning and reassures them that it's just a minor case of insomnia and there's nothing to worry about. The clock ticks by and it has been approximately 30 hours since the participants haven't slept. They spend most of their time in a large living room, talking to each other and playing games. On the other hand, Dr. Burke contacts her superiors and tells them about the drug's negative impact on the participants. She asks if the medication dose is accurate, but the superiors remind her that it's the double-blind trial, which means neither test subjects nor super supervisors have access to the experimental details. The doctor suggests that they stop the trial, as it's directly affecting their central nervous system and causing brain inflammation. However, the superiors dismiss her concern and instruct her to carry on. Following this, Dr. Burke informs the participants about a change in the trial course. Now, the objective is to see how long each participant can go without sleeping. She also mentions that the medication dose will increase significantly, but this only angers the participants. They refuse to take it, fearing that it will harm their bodies. However, they quickly change their minds when Dr. Burke offers 30,000 euros each for their cooperation. The next day, Claire is preparing to undergo a CT scan. As soon as she is sent inside the machine, her claustrophobia is triggered. She is haunted by a traumatic incident from her childhood, in which she was locked up in a small space by her cruel mother. Panicked, Claire immediately asks the doctor to stop the scan and let her out. <sighs> that evening, the group of participants sit around and talk, with each of them sharing their plans once they receive their money. Amidst their conversation, Allison suggests suggests that they be friends, even after the trial. However, Claire rudely refuses and even passes a mean comment. This offends Allison, prompting her to get up and leave. In the meantime, Dr. Burke talks to her superiors one more time, emphasizing the need to stop the trial immediately because the participant's immune system has gone erratic. However, she's instructed to press on by further increasing the dose. Amir, who happens to pass by her cabin, overhears the conversation and senses something amiss. As a result, he waits for the doctor to walk out, after which he sneaks into her cabin. He goes through her computer and is shocked to discover the test results indicating brain inflammation. He instantly starts copying the details to a portable drive, hoping to expose the perpetrators once he gets out. That was way too easy for Amir to do. Back in the living room, the group is watching TV when Claire notices Allison sitting alone. Regretting her earlier behavior, she goes to talk to her and finds her asleep. As she tries to wake her up, something shocking happens. Allison starts bleeding from her eyes, nose, and ears, followed by a violent seizure, resulting in her tragic demise. Dr. Burke notices this from a distance, leaving her horrified. Moments later, they are alerted of a security breach and a 30-second countdown is initiated for lockdown. In a frantic move, they all rush towards the exit. Dr. Burke attempts to make her way out through the closing door, but she unfortunately gets stuck in between. The participants pull her inside, but it's too late. In the aftermath, the clock resets, displaying a 24-hour countdown until the lockdown concludes. Shortly after,
after, Amir shows up and confides everything he saw. He explains that the drugs have pushed their brains to extreme limits, and sleeping under its influence will result in their death. As a result, he urges everyone to stay awake for the next 24 hours, after which they can get out of the facility to seek medical help. Amir then gives them smelling salts, telling them to use it as a last resort. Ironically, Allison's non-stop talking was their best defense. After this, the group tries their best to stay awake. It's clearly a challenge because they've already been awake for a hundred hours. Later, Amir examines Claire's brainwaves and is alarmed by the results. However, he opts not to disclose this and continues to find a solution. A while later, he starts hallucinating Dr. Burke getting up, but he encourages himself to stay focused on the work. Only a few hours pass, but the group members are already struggling against their sleep deprivation. A participant named Ray runs out of his supplies and starts pestering the others for theirs, but nobody helps him. Sometime later, Claire gazes at a painted wall, during which she hears her mother's voice. Memories of her eerie childhood flood her mind, but before succumbing to them, she is jolted awake by another participant, Marcus. Claire then comes across Vanessa, who uses fire to stay awake. Afterwards, in the bathroom, Marcus opens the water faucet, but he hears the water sound only after a few seconds. This makes him realize that his hearing has gotten delayed. Just then, he also experiences a hallucination of the exit door opening, but he sees complete darkness on the other side. As he ventures into it, he succumbs to his hallucinations in reality. With 15 hours still remaining, Claire suggests working together to find a way out, asserting that they might end up at the same fate if they keep on waiting. Heeding her advice, the group draws a hand map to determine which wall they need to break. Amir claims that it won't work due to the facility's security system, but the others ignore him and start taking turns to break the wall with an axe. They eventually manage to create a hole, but their efforts are thwarted when they come across a thick metal wall guarding the facility. While the group members are devastated, Claire goes to find Amir to discuss an alternative way. She locates him in a lab room, but he looks distraught. When asked about the matter, he hands her a confession letter, admitting that he's the one who triggered the lockdown by copying the files and breaching security. Overwhelmed with guilt, he decides to fall asleep, but Claire stops him. She asserts that there's no point in regretting anything now, and advises that he make up for it by helping them. Motivated by her words, Amir suddenly comes up with an idea. Using certain medicine as poison, he can create an effect that usually would cause brain death, but since they're under the influence of a strong drug, it should neutralize the drug's effect within them. That totally checks out, says Claire. Claire rushes to share this plan with the others, but they don't trust Amir anymore. They suspect that he's working for Blackwood Pharma due to his prior knowledge of the security system. Moreover, Paul has found a bottle of stimulants in Amir's belongings, which he had prohibited them from taking. Now that the bottle is empty, they deduce that Amir was secretly taking them to combat his sleep deprivation. Amidst their discussion, Amir walks in, and they immediately confront him regarding the stimulants, even though he claims to have kept them for safety. Ray punches him in the face, sit down Ray, little bitch, before tying him up. Disregarding Claire's objections, the group members decide to force a confession from him by any means necessary. In a desperate bid to stop them, Claire reveals that Amir has a cure for their sufferings. The group is still skeptical, so she volunteers to test the cure on herself. In the aftermath, Amir instructs the group on how to prepare the antidote. Heeding to his instructions, step by step, they're finally able to make the required chemical solution. But as they proceed to try it on Claire, Vanessa unexpectedly collapses collapses to the ground and suffers from seizure. In a quick action, Paul resorts to administering the newly made solution on her, but his hasty movement results in the solution jar falling and shattering. I knew Paul was going to screw this up for everyone. Following this tragic event, Claire returns back to the living room to check the remaining time. However, her blurry vision distorts the numbers into the phrase, good night. Just then, her gaze fixates on the painted wall. While staring at it, she begins to hear her mother's voice before envisioning darkness around her. Realizing that she's on the verge of falling asleep, she takes out the salt packet, but it slips from her hands. The hallucinations escalate, making her feel that she's floating in the air. Despite this, she does her best to reach the packet and immediately consumes it to snap out of it. She then holds on to the painted wall to stand on her feet. During this, she suddenly realizes that the wall feels different. With a new hope, she summons Paul, and the duo dismantle the wall to reveal a secret room behind it. Upon entering, they find a door that seemingly leads to the elevator. Claire then decides to inform the rest of the group members, but Paul insists on departing silently, which causes an argument and makes no goddamn sense. Meanwhile, the restrained Amir has a vision of a dead Burke, who starts manipulating his thoughts. She mentions how the others have left him to die and encourages him to stand up for himself. She also points towards the knife on the ground, indirectly 
convincing him to kill the others. Just then, Ray, who has found out Amir's confession letter, confronts him and resorts to killing him. But before he can do so, the manipulated Amir breaks free from his restraints and knocks him down. He then grabs the nearby knife and repeatedly stabs Ray to death. The sound of the commotion reaches Claire and Paul's ears, prompting them to rush back inside. As they enter the lab room, they are horrified to witness the grim sight. Realizing that Amir has gone insane, Claire tries to calm him down. However, Burke's hallucination pushes him to attack them as well. Sensing the imminent danger, the two of them run away, with Amir in pursuit. Paul enters the living room, but he locks the door, abandoning Claire behind. Left with nowhere to go, she goes to the MRI room, where she is unfortunately cornered by Amir. He pins her down, but as he's about to stab her, the MRI machine's magnet pulls the knife from his hand. Claire uses this opportunity to kick him away before making her way out of the room. On the other hand, Paul makes it to the elevator and activates it, but to his horror, it's not an elevator, but an incinerator. Soon after, massive flames burst out of the walls and engulf him in a fiery death. Back to Claire, she reaches another room and arms herself with a pair of scissors for defense. At this point, both Amir and Claire are on the brink of falling asleep, but just before they close their eyes, the clock timer reaches zero, finally ending the lock down. Seeing the opening of the exit door, Amir walks towards the same, but he comes across a group of armed men who gun him down right away. Upon hearing the gunshots, Claire hides in a room, whereas the men clear the area of bodies. While they search the other rooms, Claire tries to flee, but she comes across the bodies in bags. Hearing the men approaching her, she covers her face with blood and gets inside one of the bags, pretending to be dead. Following this, Claire, along with the other bodies, are tossed into the back of a van before being driven away. As the van reaches a distance, Claire emerges from the bag, startling the driver. This distraction causes the van to crash, because of course it does, resulting in the driver's death. The injured Claire then steps out of the vehicle, but soon collapses in the middle of the road. In the final scene, we see a comatose Claire at the hospital. A news report states that the Blackwood Pharmaceuticals was acquitted of wrongdoings, placing all the blame on Dr. Burke. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.